Stockton College, at first glance, may not seem to have many music facilities. And although the music major is brand new, Stockton's music culture has been quietly thriving since the formation of Stockton a cappella. It has grown significantly since then and now has three groups to offer, Stockapella, Stocktones, and Staccata. With every successful club, there is a mastermind behind it. My name is Neil Aronson. I'm an associate professor of physics here at Stockton. I'm also the faculty advisor for Stockton a cappella and the Society of Physics students. Well, I graduated from high school at Cherokee High School in Marlton, New Jersey, where I grew up. And then I went to the College of New Jersey, and I graduated from the College of New Jersey in 2002 with a degree in physics, and I went to Michigan State University for grad school, and in 2008 I graduated from Michigan State University with my PhD in physics, a master's in physics, and a master's in electrical engineering. I didn't know to what degree I would be involved with music. I wanted to get involved with music, but I really had no idea what music was there at Stockton. Uh, I was very happy to have a job. It was right out of grad school. I didn't have to do a postdoc. I had a lot of teaching experience beforehand, which is probably why I got hired in the first place. Uh, but I was mostly interested in teaching physics and uh, trying to survive. I had been involved with a cappella groups all through grad school and in college as well. I had started an a cappella group at TCNJ, which still exists, Trentones. And uh, I heard that there was an a cappella group at Stockton. I had just sort of heard rumors about it and that they were called Stockapella. And I asked Dr. Beverly Vaughn about it, and she said that yes, there was an a cappella group, and she got me. Uh, in contact with the person who was in charge at the time, Alex Conradi. And I met Alex, and very soon thereafter I started working with Stockapella. Um, I mean, it was growing when I started working with it. That's why Stocktones was founded, because we had so much interest and so many good people coming out, more than we could take in Stockapella. And for the same reason, Staccata started uh, a year and a half later, uh, because we had a lot of women coming out that we didn't want to turn away, but we didn't have room for, so we started an all-female a cappella group. And, I mean, this last set of auditions this past fall was also tremendous, and we had to, again, turn away like a dozen people that I thought were very, very good. And if, if any of us had enough time, I'd start a fourth group. Uh, I still get my teaching done, I still get my research done. Those are really, you know, what the school is paying me to do, so I have to kind of focus on those things. I do research with students. I go to conferences, I publish, I do everything that I'm supposed to do. Um, I, I don't know exactly how much time I spend working on a cappella per week. It's, it's a lot, um, but really it's not, I don't think it's cutting into my physics time. It's cutting into my video game time, for sure. When, uh, when I first designed the sound lab, it was a couple of computers, a soundproof room. It's, uh, I guess soundproof is a bit of a strong word. It's not entirely soundproof, but it's very good. Uh, it's a good isolation room. It has uh, sound absorbing wedges on the sides that are two inches in height, triangular wedges. I have uh, metro shaped absorbers that I can move and uh, cut if I need to. The sides I can attach Velcro to so I can mount them as I want. If I want a very anechoic space. I can put sound absorbers all over, put the bass traps in the corners, and then the room will absorb down to about 200 hertz, which is good enough to be anechoic for most purposes. A Kmar mannequin, which is a head and torso simulator, some headphones, a couple of microphones, and that was pretty much it. Sound level meter, a few instruments. And since then, it's grown. Um, my space is now filled with monitors and headphones and microphones of all kinds. Uh, I, my soundproof room gets prolific use. I have a lot more cabling than I ever used to, uh, a lot more audio equipment, a lot more devices, and also I've sort of spilled out into the space surrounding the space that's officially mine. As other people have left, I've sort of squatted and taken up their space. Neil began to create a small acoustics laboratory to do research, but it soon blossomed into a collection of high-end musical equipment. He uses not only to research with, but also to record, mix, and master the sounds of Stockton a cappella. 
it is we record everything all at once. We make a few takes. We uh, take what we can, what sounds good, and we master it. And really, the gear that I have has started to become focused towards that purpose. Oh, yeah, it's tremendously rewarding. I mean, you know, music is a huge part of my life. I grew up playing the violin and viola and singing. Uh, I still do all of those things, uh, in large part because I get to work with Stockton a cappella. And, uh, well, I didn't grow up lo loving physics, and anyone who says that they does is a liar. Uh, that's something that you learn to love later in life. But I did. I learned to love physics when I was in school. I found out that it was something that I was good at, that I really enjoyed doing, and I never wanted to stop doing that either. Uh, doing acoustics is a wonderful blend between the two halves of my li life. Uh, it really puts together everything that I truly love, all into one. And I get to do both of those things, and I'm very, very lucky that I get to do those things and get paid for it. Neil offers resources Stockton is lacking. He brings something valuable and unique to the campus, so students looking to gain knowledge can find plenty of it in Upper Ceiling. Somebody take my hand and leave.